Hello everybody! This PowerPoint will walk you through some of the basics about using patterns, including what is a pattern, um, what's inside the pattern envelope, and what you have to do with it. So let's get started. A pattern in sewing is a document that usually comes in an envelope um, unless you have a PDF version, which we'll talk about later. Um, and a pattern includes at least two different parts. You will find paper pattern pieces that you will use to lay out onto your fabric and then you cut around those to cut out your fabric. Usually these are printed on really cheap tissue paper um, because they need to be very big and they'll have a whole bunch of different pattern markings and other information on them. We'll also talk about this a little bit later. The other thing you'll find inside of the pattern is the instructions for how to sew the item and also some other important information um, regarding how things get stitched together. So take a look at your example pattern envelope. Um, there will be a front and back side. Usually the front is pretty simple and just contains um, some of the most basic information, like the brand of pattern. In this case, we have this pattern from Simplicity. Other common brands of patterns are McCall's, um, Vogue, Quick Sew, uh, and a couple others, um, Butterick, and some others that I can't think of right now. Uh, but those are the main ones that produce these kinds of commercial patterns that are meant for um, people to uh, people who are kind of just sewing from home. The other thing that you'll find on the pattern envelope is the ID number of the pattern. Because these companies create so many different patterns, they have to have a way of organizing it all, including the pattern and all of the pieces inside of it, all of the components. So everything inside the pattern and the pattern envelope will include the pattern ID number. In this case, look at the top left and our ID number is 8609, which means if you type in um, to Google, for instance, simplicity 8609, you should be able to find this pattern. Um, so the ID number basically is used to identify what kind of pattern you have. The pattern will also show you a size range. Sometimes this will just say something like extra small to extra large. In other case, they might use um, numerical sizes. There will be on the back a size chart for you to understand what these sizes mean, but typically a pattern will include pattern pieces for a specific range of sizes. Usually they will have um, what's considered the more standard sizes, um, and then they might have another pattern which is the same, um, like same, same garments and same instructions and all that, but they might have a, a larger size range, for instance, like a plus size um, size range. So, as you're looking at your patterns, make sure you do pay attention to the size range provided in that envelope um, because sometimes the size that you need isn't necessarily the size pattern that we actually have or available on a website, for instance. Um, and then the last thing that you will see on the front side of the envelope, and yes, I know I'm switching back between envelope and envelope, um, the other thing you'll see are some images. Sometimes these can be in the form of flat illustrations, which means like a kind of like an outline of what the garment would look like. So on the left hand side, you can see examples of a flat illustration of the garments. Um, you might also see more um, fashion illustrations like sketches of a model wearing the garment. And then in other cases, you might actually see a photograph of a person, like a real person, wearing an example of the garment that you can make. 
Another important um, thing to note about the envelope is it will also label the various types of garments that you can sew using this pattern. Um, they will be labeled with an A, B, C, D sort of um, labeling scheme, typically speaking. And uh, each unique style will basically have its own letter. So you can see in the example here, um, you have three types of tops, A, B, and C, each with a slightly different variation. Um, and then you've got skirts D and F, which will probably have, um, you know, possibly a, a different, different length of the skirt. Um, and then you've also got skirt E, which is, um, you know, similar but different. So in this case, you can sew up to um, six different items using the pieces in this pattern. On the back side of the envelope, there is a lot of really important information, but it can be super overwhelming at first because they tend to print this in really, really tiny print. Um, and there's just a whole bunch of numbers and you have to line everything up with the grid and figure out what everything means. Um, so we're gonna take a closer look at this envelope and figure out the information that we have here. Um, you'll notice at the top, there's the ID number again, printed very visibly in case you need it. Um, the envelope will also have some sort of like a title or brief description of what's in this pattern, um, pattern envelope. So here we have Mrs. Skirt in two lengths and knit tops. So this tells us that the general age and gender of these garments is meant to be for misses, which basically refers to um, like older teens and young women. Of course, that's just a suggestion. And then we have the short description skirt in two lengths. So that would be um, skirts D and E. Oh, and we see from the back of the envelope, the F refers to the belt that goes with D. Um, so my mistake there. There are just two different skirts, and then there's F, which would be like the optional um, belt or tie that could go with the skirt. Uh, and then we have knit tops. We have three different examples of knit tops that can be constructed using this pattern. Right below, we have a list of suggested fabrics. Now, it's not important that you necessarily know what all of these fabrics are. Um, but just that you have a general sense of what kind of fabric is suitable and then from there you can talk to um, wherever it is where you're getting your fabric from they can help you specifically narrow down what kinds of fabric would be suitable for this pattern so later on when we talk about choosing your pattern to follow for your first project um, I'm gonna tell you to take picture of the front and the back of the envelope, making sure that you can read all of the information on the pattern envelope um, so that you can then show that to the salesperson when you go to buy your fabric. So they are specifically trained and should be able to help you out in picking um, fabrics that are suitable for this pattern. So we see here suggested fabrics um, so it says A, B, and C. So those are the three tops. A, B, and C are sized for stretch knits only, which means that the fabric that you use for those shirts have, has to be stretchy. Um, and then it gives us examples. Interlock, jacquard, jersey, lightweight sweater knit, and a couple of other things. Um, so it says, see, pick a knit rule, suitable for overlock serger. Okay, we won't go into the details there, uh, but basically there's a bunch of example knit fabrics that would be suitable for making these tops. Um, and then there's a bunch of fabrics listed for what would be suitable for the skirt. Um, so that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't use other fabrics but you just need to be aware of what you're in for. So for instance, for the shirts, the size of the 
pattern pieces assumes that your fabric is going to stretch a certain amount and that's why they give you the warning there that you want to be using a stretchy knit fabric for that. Um, you don't have to, but chances are you're, you're not going to be able to get the garment on. Or you would have to take that into consideration and go up several sizes so that you are sure that you're going to be able to put it over top of, um, you know, you can get it on without having a stretchy fabric. Um, another thing of information that you will see on the back of the pattern envelope is the notions that are required for making this project. Notions are basically small items that you would use um, as you're sewing. Sometimes these are little pieces of equipment, so like um, scissors or needle, um, but in terms of these notions, they're specifically talking about other consumable things that you'll need to buy um, to make this garment. So here we have thread. Of course, you're going to need thread. Um, and you would also need for the skirts D and E, it says one seven inch invisible zipper. So this tells you also that the closure for the dress is a zipper specifically an invisible zipper. Um, you can talk to me in terms of notions that you need and what we might already have here at the school. And then next you will see a size chart. And I have um, a larger version of the size chart on the next slide. However, sometimes there is a slight variation in what measurements are considered um, what size, depending on the brand and um, age slash gender of the garment and stuff like that. So always refer back to the actual pattern envelope for the specific size that you close, most closely match up with. Um, so here we have the sizes given in inches of the various sizes. So you can see, for instance, if you are considered a size four, that means you have a bust of 29 and a half inches, a waist of 22 inches, um, and a hip circumference of 31 and a half inches. The back to neck, back neck to waist measurement would be 15 and one quarter inch. Um, most often, it's just the bust, waist, and hip measurements that you'll really need to pay attention to. Uh, so what you would basically do is measure yourself, your bust, waist, and hip, and then see which one of these sizes you most closely follow. Um, and then depending on the garment, you may want to size up or size down based on your, uh, your measurements. Note that the garments will end up being larger than the actual um, measurements given for, for the body measurements here. So this is, this is just assuming what, um, what your body measurements are and then the pattern has accommodated um, for, for the, uh, we call it ease in sewing, but basically just how much room in the garment, how much extra fabric you need to be comfortable in this thing. Next is the most important but most confusing part, and this is the amount of fabric you're going to need to sew the various items. So if we take a look at view A, which is the top, it gives you amounts of fabric in yards for the various sizes. So what you would do here is figure out which size you're, you would be making and how many yards of fabric you need. Now the other important thing to, to note here is that they will give you the size of the fabric um, based on the width of the overall fabric. 
fabric generally comes in two widths. It's either going to be 45 inches wide or 60 inches wide. And so that's why you see here the number 60, 60 inches. And then over at the skirts, they give you options for 45 inches and 60 inches. Uh, so this tells you that if you are making top A and you have fabric that is 60 inches wide, you would need this many yards of fabric to make the top for this size. So for instance, if you're a size four, then you only need seven eighths of a yard. And if you are a size 14, you would need one yard, a full yard of the fabric. So you kind of have to um, look across at the row and then up and down at the column to figure out what these numbers refer to. Let's look at one other quick example. So for D, the skirt, if you are a size 10, for example, and your fabric is 45 inches wide, you would need three and one eighth of a yard to make that skirt. If the fabric were wider than that, if it were 60 inch fabric, then you would only need two and five eighths of a yard for that one. All of this information, the, um, the person helping you choose your fabric should also be able to um, double check for you and give you guidance on. So people who work at fabric stores, generally um, they are sewers themselves, sewers, sewists, uh, and they have used patterns before. And so they'll know if you show them a picture of the pattern envelope, they'll know how to decipher all of this and get you the fabric that you need and the amount that you need, and also possibly give you some other tips. Lastly, um, you'll sometimes see if it's not on the front or sometimes you'll see it on both more flat illustrations of the garment. Typically what they put on the back of the envelope is a back view of the garment and then on the front of the envelope you'll see a front view of the garment. So the outlines that you see on the left here those are examples of flat illustrations. And these ones here would be showing us the back of the garment. And these illustrations kind of give you a little bit of a sense of um, what the garment actually looks like, how it's put together, where the main seams are, stuff like that. Um, at the very bottom of the pattern, there's also, and I didn't include it in the list here, the finished garment measurements. You don't really need to worry about this unless you're making something, um, you know, let's say like pants and you're a really, really tall person. You might want to double check, um, you know, the finished length of the pants to make sure that it's long enough for you. And if not, you can add on some more fabric and whatnot. Um, for the most part, you don't really need to worry about that part. On this slide, I have a size chart of the various sizes from 4 to 26 for women and from 30 to 48 for men. I also have converted it to centimeters. So this is in both inches and centimeters. Um, this PowerPoint will be on the website, um, the class website. So you can also go on there and take a look um, and figure out which size you most closely correspond to. So, um, going back to the pattern itself, we mentioned that the pattern includes paper pattern pieces um, that are meant to be cut out, and then you lay these onto your fabric, pin them, and then you cut around them. These um, pattern pieces have to be put onto your fabric a certain way. They all have to align a certain way. Um, and, you know, there's a couple other things that we need to consider when we cut out our patterns, uh, cut out our fabric. And we will be going over this um, later on. So how to do what's called a cutting layout. We will talk about that specifically.
The pattern itself in the sewing directions section um, will give you some examples of how to lay the pattern pieces out onto your fabric. Now the pattern pieces will also have a lot of important markings and other information that you'll need to know um, for how to use the pattern piece. I'll show you an example on the next slide. And overall, just like um, if you were reading a recipe or some sort of woodworking plan, sewing patterns do require a lot of knowledge of specific terminology, symbols, and conventions that are specific to sewing as a subject or as a, as a discipline or a field. This means that it can be really challenging to get started, especially if you don't take a formal class on it, um, or you might find that there's a whole lot of information to know at once. Um, don't worry, with time you will become more experienced. I am here to help you out with all of this and, and figure out what you, um, what you need to do and what you need to know. And the more you work with patterns, the easier it will get. You will start to learn a lot more um, of the terminology and just the way things are done in, in sewing. So you will become more confident. Here I have an example of a pattern piece. So this is the paper pattern piece. And here we have um, a piece with uh, a bunch of information on it. So on the right hand side I've listed out some of the notable pieces of information on the paper pattern piece. So these are things that you will find printed out on the paper. So usually you'll see um, in a very large, very noticeable way, um, a large number and then also some sort of title or label. So here we have number eight. So this is pattern piece eight. And it's the front and back band for D, whatever D happens to be. The pattern pieces will all be numbered. So inside the pattern envelope, if you open it up and take a look at all the pattern pieces, each pattern piece will have a number and that number will identify which piece it is. Um, you'll also see printed on here the pattern ID number. So if you accidentally lose your piece or um, you know your pieces get mixed up with somebody else's, you can look at the pattern ID number 6095 in this case um, and match all of those up. You will also see the cut quantity. This will tell you how many pieces of this piece you will need of your fabric. So here it says cut two on fold. Uh, we'll talk about the on fold later, but basically you are going to need to cut two of these pieces. Sometimes pieces will say cut one, sometimes they'll say cut two, sometimes cut four, but basically they will tell you specifically how many you need to cut. Along the outside edge, you will see a thick um, line, a solid line. That will be the cut line, so you just follow that line with your scissors. But sometimes um, on some of the edges, you will notice that there are multiple lines to follow. So when you have a pattern that has multiple sizes, so in this case, the size range for this pattern goes from 10 to 22. So this means if you are a size 10, then you need to be careful to cut along the line stated for size 10. And the same with 12, 14, 16, etc. So these commercial patterns are usually printed for a range of sizes meaning that you can use this pattern again if, if you want to make the same thing in a different size. Um, but you just need to be careful then to follow the right cutting lines for the size that you need to make. Um, sometimes you'll also see lines specifically for where to fold something. Um, here we don't have that. You will also see a grain line and the grain line is usually a straight line that has an arrowhead at both ends. 
And a pattern piece will either have a grain line or a cut on the fold line. So in this case, we have one of those cut on fold lines. And we can tell because it kind of looks like a grain line um, in that it has the two arrowheads, but it also is bent in and points to a specific line on the pattern piece. So it kind of looks like a bracketed arrow. So this line basically tells us to match this edge of the pattern piece up with the fold of your fabric. And when you cut this piece out, because it's cut on the fold, it will open up and be symmetrical on both sides and you'll end up with one large piece. We will talk about this again when we talk about cutting layouts. Um, and then lastly, we have things called notches, which are these little triangle bits. Um, you can see at the very top of the cutting line there in the middle, you have a little triangle. And then also on the left hand side, there's a little triangle. These are called notches and they help you line stuff up later on. And then there might also be additional markings or symbols on the pattern piece that are used to match things up when you go to sew them together. Moving on to the sewing directions page. Um, so on the sewing directions, the first page is always um, going to show these two main things. You will see flat illustrations again of all of the pieces that you, or all of the garments that you can make, including the different views or different styles. In this case, we have um, skirt A and B. We have some pants C, a vest D, and a jacket E. Next, you will see a, an overview of all of the pattern pieces that are contained in this pattern envelope. So all of these are numbered, as we said on the previous slide. We have 20 different pattern pieces in this example here. So all of these have a certain number and they will also show the label here. So for instance, number one, piece number one is skirt front for A and B. Piece number two is skirt back for A and B. And then we've got front facing, back facing, pants front, pants back, etc. So this gives you like an overview of all of the different pieces. The sewing directions will also show you the cutting layouts um, suggested for these pattern pieces. So this basically shows you which piece numbers you need to make a certain garment and how to lay them out onto your fabric. So here we have the example. Um, if you are making the pants view C, then we would need pattern pieces five, six, seven, and eight. We also have here some different layouts. All of these um, are assuming that you're gonna make pants C, but they will depend on the size of your fabric and the size of your garment, like your body measurement size. So we've got um, the top two here show you if you have 45 inch fabric and the sizes um, for the top one, if you are size four to 16, then you can use that layout. And if you are size 18 or 20, then you would use the layout on the bottom. If alternatively you have 60 inch fabric, then you could use those alternative layouts below. Now, most of the cutting layouts will show you how to fold your fabric um, and where to put the pattern pieces. And we'll, we'll talk about cutting layouts in a lot more detail um, later on. Lastly, the sewing directions pages will actually show you the directions um, for how to stitch everything together. Usually they're organized by which view 
um, you're doing. So here we have skirt A and B instructions. So you would find which view you're doing and then start there. These are step-by-step -step directions with pictures. So it makes it really easy to follow along. And the more you use patterns and the more you try to read the instructions, look at the pictures and figure out what you need to do, the more comfortable you're gonna be with some of the language used and um, just how everything gets put together. Here we need to assume that seam allowance are, seam allowances are gonna be 1.5 centimeters unless otherwise stated. The diagrams will show you um, the right side of the fabric and the wrong side of the fabric based on what's shaded. So the shaded side would show the right side of the fabric. And if there's no shading, then that's showing you the wrong side of the fabric. So that can also help you in terms of figuring out how things need to be sewn. Lastly, the directions won't necessarily say this explicitly, but they will assume that you are doing things as you go. So they assume that you're going to press your seams and also assume that you're going to serge or finish all of the raw edges, basically after every step. So you need to remember to do this as you're sewing. Um, otherwise, you might get to a point where you can't actually do it because you've already sewn one thing to another thing. Um, so it's really important, and I will, uh, I will remind you this as we go, um, that you need to be pressing your seams and serging your seams as you go. Okay, everyone, now we're going to talk about the um, very first independent project that you're going to do. Uh, this will be one of your major sewing projects for this course, um, and we're just going to talk about some of the things that you have to keep in mind when you are selecting a project. Um, at the grade 11, 12 level, I will let you have a fair amount of freedom in choosing what you want to do. Um, that said, there are some guidelines that I want you to keep in mind based on your sewing level. Um, so for those of you who are intermediate and advanced, meaning you've worked with patterns before, um, you understand a fair amount of the terminology already and you can follow a pattern pretty independently and maybe just need to check in with me um, about a couple things here and there. Uh, so for those of you who are at this level, um, things to keep in mind are to pick a pattern that has a suitable level of difficulty for you specifically. So thinking about certain techniques or types of fabric that maybe you haven't worked with yet, um, or things that you have done before, but maybe you didn't quite master it. Um, so don't choose anything too easy, but at the same time, uh, make sure that you're not going too, too ambitious as well. Um, for the first project, I would like people to follow some kind of commercial pattern, even if you do plan on making changes there. Um, for your second project, you will have the option to design something yourself um, if that's something that's, that interests you. And then we'll talk about um, things like pattern drafting and pattern making then. But for the first project, I would like you to work with pattern um, because it's a, another good reminder of um, the skills and the terminology and all of that stuff. So I have prepared um, a number of pattern lookbooks, and these are kind of like my master catalog of all of the patterns that we have um, in our inventory here at Handsworth. So I took a lot of time over the summer and I went through everything and I cataloged it and I gave it a difficulty level um, and I kept track of which pieces are missing and which patterns have instructions and which are don't have instructions, stuff like that. So it is a lot more organized from last year. Um, please be careful with these books and keep them organized. Uh, make sure you don't take anything out of them. Um, because it did take me a really long time to put them together. Uh, so you can 
look through the lookbooks and you will notice that they're sorted by garment type um, and to a certain extent by gender. There is some overlap there, so there's some unisex um, patterns in various um, books. The Inside the lookbooks, there are the pattern envelopes um, that you can take a look at and also the label that I've given them with some more information. You can also find patterns online, but the thing that you need to keep in mind here is that um, if you're going to use an online pattern, you need to pick something that you can instantly download. Um, it could be free or it could be um, one that you purchase, but it needs to be something that you can download the entire thing of. So it should have a pattern that you can print out, like all of the pattern pieces that you can print out um, and put those pieces together. And it should have all of the directions there for you as well. So try not to pick something where um, like you're not going to order a pattern online and then have it shipped to you because that probably is going to take too long to arrive. Um, and also don't pick anything that just has like a picture tutor tutorial, but maybe there's no pattern or maybe the instructions aren't so clear or it doesn't use the actual sew sewing terminology. Um, so just make sure that you are actually getting um, some sort of commercially produced pattern. Um, so you can look through the lookbooks and look online. I've made a list here of um, some of the different skills and things that tend to be on the more difficult side. Um, so you can decide for yourself based on your level um, how many of these things you might want to include. So things like sleeves, collars, hoods, certain kinds of pockets, these can all be a little bit more challenging. Um, so you might want to, to pick something that has only a few of these if you are not so familiar with them, or if you're really experienced, you can pick something very complicated. Uh, same thing with types of fabrics. So very stretchy fabrics are quite difficult to sew. Um, anything really thick, so like denim, um, or leather or faux leather, those are very difficult to sew. Um, and anything that's really thin or slippery or delicate. So think about like chiffon fabric or um, like a, a really um, soft satin fabric, something like that. These are quite difficult um, to, to maneuver in the sewing machine and they take quite a bit of care. So keep those things in mind as you are looking at patterns that interest you. For anyone who is new to sewing or a beginner or anyone who hasn't worked with a commercial pattern before, um, so specifically anyone who hasn't taken textiles or maybe you only took textiles eight, um, and in textiles eight usually you don't follow a commercial pattern, you just do um, some sort of simple project that everybody else in the class is doing as well. Um, so in that case, uh, a lot of this stuff is going to be really new to you. And to avoid you getting too overwhelmed and picking a project that's too difficult for you, um, I'm suggesting to stick with something simple that will allow you to really focus on the basics and start to learn some of that terminology there. So choosing something um, that has an elastic waistband, and that could be something like shorts, pants, or a skirt. Um, these have lots of different options, so it could be like sweatpants or pajama pants or shorts, um, like loungewear is really um, pretty easy to work with, um, and something like a simple skirt that has a waistband um, that has an elastic inside of it. These things are going to be um, a lot more beginner friendly. So you can still look through the pattern lookbooks, um, but sort of uh, narrow down your search to things that fit these criteria. So a lot of thing, the things in the sleepwear section, for instance, would, uh, would be suitable here. Um, a few other things to think about as you're looking through the patterns um, that are available. Uh, you can make alterations to these patterns. So if you see something and you don't like the length of it, um, you can always change that 
or most of the times you can change that pretty easily. Um, you can always add things on, like if you want to sew on a pocket or something else that's pretty simple, um, that's definitely doable. And, and things like the fabric and color are not limited to just what they show you on the front of the pattern envelope. Um, you, can, you can definitely go beyond that and think beyond the scope of what they're showing you. Um, like for instance, pajama pants, you can use that pattern to make sweatpants. Even if it doesn't show sweatpants on the, on the pattern itself, um, you, know, you can definitely do that with the same pattern pieces. Um, so keep an open mind like that. I would like everybody to take some time today and do some research. And you're going to send me a message on Microsoft Teams. Um, just search me up. You should be able to find me pretty easily. Um, keep track uh, of any patterns that you're interested in by taking a picture of them, both the front and the back of the envelope, um, because that will have all of the information that you need. And when you message me on Teams, we will discuss basically, um, is this project suitable for you? What do you need to know about buying materials and stuff like that? Um, so my hope, and again, I'm really sorry that I can't be here today, um, but I'll try to help you as much as I can virtually tomorrow, or uh, sorry, virtually in class today. Um, I was hoping that you could use the long weekend to do your fabric shopping and have that ready for Wednesday next week. And for those of you who are particularly ahead, um, you might even be able to start on Monday if you have your stuff ready. So ideally that was my plan, which means you still have early next week, Monday, if you need to talk to me in person about something. Um, I also really hope to be back tomorrow um, and you could definitely drop by tutorial time to see me um, about that as well. Okay, I think that's all. Um, I'm going to give you some time to look at all that stuff and please do check in with me. Thank you.